evening. Welcome to the part two of the Delaware Student Success um, Joining the Military webinar. Um, my name is Karen Keegan from the Delaware Department of Education. Thanks for taking the time to join us for this. Um, on, the, on the webinar with me are my colleagues from the University of Delaware um, Institute for Public Administration, um, Kelly Sheritz. Rachel Widom and Tilly Jonas, who will help us run these Delaware Student Success Initiative. So thanks to them very much for being our partners. Um, a couple of things I wanna share about the webinar. Um, everyone who's attending um, will be on mute for the whole time and also no videos are being shown um, of the attendees. Um, please put your questions in the chat. We want to hear your questions and they can all be answered during this session. Um, we have had several of these webinars so far. Um, every webinar is being recorded and the recordings are being posted on DelawareStudentSuccess.org. You'll see right on the homepage, there's a button that says watch recorded webinars. And um, we've had all of our Delaware colleges and universities present information on their admissions, their programs, their opportunities. Um, last week, we heard from the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines in our part one of our military webinars. Um, we've had sessions on how to write a college essay, how to pick a career area, um, financial aid, how to pay for college, scholarships. So please take a look at the list of available information and um, take some time um, so you can learn the most about these topics and then make the best choice for you and your family on what you choose to do um, after you leave high school. Next week, we uh, actually on Thursday, we'll be talking about resumes, interviews and cover letters. And then next week we will have a session on apprenticeships and industry certification. So you can learn what kind of careers you can have um, with, with that education. We also have the Delaware Student Success Texting Program. Um, you can sign up if you're interested. It's for high school students and parents also are welcome to sign up. You can text the word success to 302-492-2092. We'll send you reminders on the upcoming webinars. We'll send you tips on things to think about doing to prepare for your next steps after high school. And you can also text us back with questions. And actually the team on this call on this webinar tonight are the people that would be answering your questions. So please feel free to sign up. When you text the word success to that number, we will ask you for your first and last name, your school and your grade, just to help us make sure you're getting the right messages for your grade. Um, so with that, um, I wanna turn it over to our first presenter. Tonight, we're gonna hear from the Army National Guard and the Air National Guard, which is very exciting. We have Sergeant Parker with us from the Army National Guard, and I am going to turn it over to him um, so he can tell you about educational and career opportunities. So please remember to put your questions in the chat and we'll stop along the way and answer your questions. So Sergeant Parker, thank you for being with us tonight. All right, awesome. Thank you, Karen. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well and safe. Um, my name's Sergeant First Class Jeffrey Parker. Uh, I wanna say, first of all, I am a Delawarean. I'm from Delaware City. I graduated from William Penn. Um, upon my graduation, I joined the Guard and I've been in for probably about the last 20 years. I've enjoyed my time here. It's given me the opportunity to be trained in a few different skills, to build a little confidence as a, as a young man. As a young man, I, I wasn't as outspoken or confident or outgoing as I am now. So I, I really have to thank the guard for that. But it's also given me the opportunity to do some things like travel, um, jump from some aircraft, uh, planes and helicopters. Of, of course, that's not something that everyone has to do who joins, but um, something that I enjoy. Um, and now what the Guard has given me is the ability to share my lifestyle with, with you all. So hopefully um, some of you will find what I have to say uh, interesting and maybe you'll decide that it's something that you wanna do. So with that being said, First of all, the National Guard 
is basically a part-time military service. So we serve the state of Delaware and our commander in chief is the governor of Delaware. Um, what we do is take care of the welfare of Delaware. So anything that happens here that puts our citizens at risk, we come out and we assist the community. That could be anything from tornadoes to floods to hurricanes to civil unrest um, or even something as uh, simple as a snowstorm. We come out and we help the community in any way we can. Um, just some examples. We helped our, our fellow citizens in Texas and in Puerto Rico and in Florida two years ago. They were all, they were all uh, suffering from the damages and floods of hurricanes. And the Delaware Guard sent people out to help assist with that. Now, we also defend the nation. So whatever comes up in the world, we could be a part of the solution. So, so the Delaware Guard really has a global impact. Um, now, a lot of people don't know this, but we're the oldest branch of military. The militias that were set up to protect states and towns uh, way back when we were separating from Britain have evolved into what is now the National Guard. And every state has a National Guard, so every state is mandated by Congress to maintain a militia. Hence, fast forward a little bit, that's our National Guard. Um, now, what that means to you as a member of the National Guard, the first thing we expect out of you is uh, part-time service. So you work with us one week in a month and two weeks out of the year. And what you do is you train in a job field. We have a ton of different career fields. I'm gonna pull these up on the screen. So these are, These are the different career fields that you could work in as a member of the National Guard. As you can see, um, this is a very broad list of things. So I know you see this uniform and it looks like I am fresh out of, uh, I don't know, Call of Duty or a bad army movie, but you could be in law enforcement in the National Guard, you can be in medical, you can be in maintenance, you can be in logistical, you can even be a firefighter. So we're not all running and gunning and kicking in doors and um, kind of doing the army thing. We're, we're doing a lot, of, a lot of blue collar jobs um, and some white collar jobs that folks do in the, in the real world. Us military folks, we call uh, the civilian world the real world. Right, so here are all the things you could do. Um, now, for your one week in a month, you'll work in one of these jobs or you'll do something typical Army. So, you know, uh, if you're a medic, you'll work as a medic for the weekend. Or we may go to the range and shoot. Uh, we may pack, practice on our land navigation. We may go on a convoy with our vehicles. Um, it just all depends on what we're doing that weekend. A typical drill weekend, um, someone would, a soldier would show up about seven o'clock in the morning, work in their job field, get off about 4.30. So that would be a Saturday. You come back and you do the same thing on Sunday and uh, we would see you again next month. Now, what you get for your service our biggest benefit is education. So right now we're looking at uh, the cost of Delaware schools. Um, so the average is running about 25,000 25, a year. What the guard does is for our part-time members, right? If you are 
a student at University of Delaware, a student at Dell Tech, a student at Wilmington U, um, and a student at the University of Delaware, of course, um, will pay 100% of your tuition up to a master's degree. So I know there's a few grad students in here. So you can get your college tuition totally paid for, right? Now, on top of that, so the guard pays your tuition, but the guard also pays you. So as a student, as a full-time student, you're looking at about 392 a month. So 392 a month plus your tuition taken care of. Now, if you can score over a over 50 on the ASVAB, we're gonna add the Montgomery GI Bill kicker. So this is monthly, right? So we got tuition paid for, we got the GI Bill, and we got the GI Bill kicker. And your paycheck is gonna be, um, like I said, it's a part-time job. So your paycheck is gonna be about $200 a month. So a full-time student in the guard. So let's just say your, your average student at University of Delaware, um, instead of working at uh, Chipotle or El Diablo or the bookstore, you can be a member of the guard and the guard will get your tuition paid for and you'll make about $1,000 a month. Now, to join, um, of course, you'd have to take the ASVAB. It's, it stands for uh, aptitude, uh, I'm sorry, um, armed services aptitude vocational batter, battery. And it's, it's the military's entrance exam. It's based off of high school math and English. Um, for most UD students, uh, it, it's relatively easy. Most University of Delaware students do pretty well. Um, now, you'd also have to get a physical. So the physical is nothing strenuous. It's, it's more like a, a medical physical for, let's say, uh, sports. So if you've ever participated in high school or collegiate sports, the physical is very similar. Um, so, of course, you, you got to be smart to join the guard. You got to be in good health. Um, our age range is 17 to 35. So, anyone in between those ages um, can join. And, and morally, um, you, you have to be uh, a, a decent citizen. Now, we do understand that uh, some folks have made mistakes, and the guard doesn't doesn't do a lot to hold that against you. So there's a lot that we can work with. And we usually like to talk about that stuff um, on like a case by case basis. So the joining process, um, the first thing you have to do is contact a recruiter. So we have our National Guard contact up here, uh, Master Sergeant Mercado. If you just want to um, shoot him a text or give him a call, that will get the process started and he could have you meet with a member of his team and we can get together. We'll talk about the guard and see if it works for you. If it does, we take steps to you joining. If it doesn't, like we appreciate the time and we just appreciate for you to help get the word out. So just a few things I didn't cover. Um, as far as benefits, uh, of course, we have all the educational benefits that I just talked about. Um, us paying for tuition, $392 a month, uh, $350 a month. If you score over a 50, we also have sign-on bonuses. So you can get up to a $20,000 bonus if you're willing to join the Guard. Um, but we also have benefits in travel. So... So if you, if you join the guard, um, you'll travel with the guard at least once a year. So this past year, 
We've had units in Puerto Rico. We've had folks in, um, we had our construction folks go out to Poland and they worked on kind of like an old Polish army fort. But once a year, you'll travel with the guard. Um, there's also benefits if you want to travel alone. I know a lot of you guys are students. You guys like to get out for spring break. There's military exclusive uh, uh, travel groups. You can get you can get trips that are a little bit cheaper, accommodations that are a little bit cheaper. If you guys like to fly, you can fly around the world for free as long as you're going to the same place that the military is going. So you can get a free military flight. Um, we have benefits in healthcare. If you need healthcare, right now single soldiers can get healthcare for about fifty dollars a month. Um, that's terribly cheap. I know that's something that we don't think about very often, but healthcare is definitely needed. Um, there's also military exclusive financial institutions that you can belong to. So USAA, Navy Federal, these are all things that you can do as a member of the Guard. Um, just the benefit of that, uh, cheaper insurance, cheaper interest rates if you're looking for a home or you're looking for a car. Um, and then there's kind of like the, uh, the benefits of the guard that aren't really tangible. Um, we are the best teacher of leadership. So nowhere in the world can you learn leadership like you can in the Army National Guard. Um, we also teach you to work as a team and not necessarily uh, um, concern yourself with what you're doing, but more is like what the group is doing and, and what you can do uh, to build organizations. Um, I, see, I see a few questions. Um, the first one, what is the age to be an army medic? So to join, you gotta be 17 to 35. As long as we can get you in, um, there's no, there's not necessarily a, a, a cap to be a, an army medic. So, um, so we, we can, we can, if we can get you in the possibilities there for you to be an army medic. I see someone asked, can you play sports in, in the guard and can you play sports and still be a part of the guard? So our adjutant general, who is the commander of the Delaware National Guard, he made a promise to us that if we recruit collegiate and high school athletes, that they will not miss practice, they will not miss a game. And he made that promise to us. So, so far, um, we have been, we've been delivering on that promise. And all of your, all of your kind of like milestone events like your, your graduation, your homecomings, uh, your, your prom, you're, you're not gonna miss those. We're gonna excuse you for all of those things, um, including, including sports. So if you're a collegiate or a high school athlete, you, you will make your games. Um, we know what weekend we have to, I'm sorry, here's another question. How far in advance do you know what weekends you would serve. So we know our weekends about a year out. So our schedule's made for the following year. We post it and we give it to our soldiers and you'll, you'll know what weekend you work. So you can kind of plan around that. Also, you know, sometimes a drill weekend falls on just, uh, you know, a time that you have something um, terribly personal going on or, or you're, you're busy. A drill weekend uh, can fall on, um, you know, life. So you can have your drill weekends excused if you have something important going on. Okay, so I see a question about uh, 
basic training. So for, for most of us that are in high school, we'll do basic training after we graduate high school, right? So, so you graduate sometime in June and maybe a week later, two weeks later, or sometimes even a month, you'll ship off the basic training, right? So most people go to basic training as soon as they graduate and they complete their basic training and their technical job training um, right after basic. So you gotta be kind of prepared to be gone for about at least five and a half, sometimes six months. Um, for, for someone who is a junior in high school, you can join at 17 with parents' permission. You can go to basic training uh, right after your junior year. You can come back, finish your senior year of high school, and then after that, you can go to your uh, job training or AIT immediately following your graduation. So I, I hope that answers the, the, the question for my 16 year old junior out there. Um, I, see, I see another question about, um, about sports. So if you have a game that falls on a weekend that you're working for the guard, um, it's pretty simple. We'll, we'll excuse you and we'll let you go to your game um, and, and enjoy your sports. Um, I, hope, I hope that answers the question. And you can, you can make that time up. So maybe there's some days during the week you could serve or maybe there's a different weekend that you can serve or we could just excuse you. Um, or, you know, you can catch up on your, on your service after the season. There's, there's a lot of ways for us to work around someone who's in sports. All right, so I have a question about basic training. So basic training is the process of learning how to be a soldier, right? You'll learn how to march, you'll learn customs and courtesies of, of the army, uh, you'll learn some really, really uh, some stuff that everyone in the army needs to know, like, like uh, land navigation, hand-to-hand um, -hand combat. You'll learn uh, like life-saving techniques and first aid. Um, you'll, you'll do a lot of physical fitness. So a lot of running, a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups. Um, don't let that stuff scare you. No one joins as, as a as LeBron James, um, no one joins as an NFL player. Um, but, but these are the things you're gonna learn. You're gonna go through a lot of obstacle courses um, and you're also gonna get a rifle and you'll go to the range and you'll learn how to shoot and you'll be good at it. You'll learn how to shoot targets that are three football fields away. So basic training is, it's, it's challenging but it's definitely not impossible. Most people who start basic training graduate basic training just fine. Now, basic training is located um, in four locations. So we got South Carolina, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Missouri. So if you, when you go to basic training, you'll be going to one of those four locations. Um, I hope that answers the question. Um, what are the benefits of joining as a junior? So, if you join as a junior, um, one, you're, you're paid as a service member. So we'll start paying you immediately. So someone who joins as a junior, they go to basic training after their, their junior year of high school and they get paid for basic training. That's a, that's a few thousand dollars. That also adds another year of service um, onto their contract. So if you think of your contract as a, as a, a stopwatch or, or a timer that's counting down, um, the sooner you join, the, the faster that timer get, gets uh, counted down. Um, and also someone joining as a junior can have the opportunity to get their service out of the way and get to college a little faster. Um, I, I hope that answers the question as far as uh, the benefit of joining as a junior. 
Um, there are there are physical requirements as far as joining. Um, so you you have to meet the Army's baseline of uh, height to weight ratio. Um, you have to be uh, generally healthy. You have to be, uh, um, of course, uh, drug free. Um, if you've had a medical issue in the past that's cleared up, we, we can generally still work with that. So, but yes, there are physical requirements to join and they, they kind of vary uh, depending on uh, how tall you are, how much you weigh, your age, whether you're male or female. Um, but yes, absolutely. Um, my, my advice would be to just uh, contact us with, with, your, with your concerns or questions and we can kind of handle them on a like one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, right now I have our, our contact info up. Um, please shoot a text out to uh, Master Sergeant Mercado um, telling you're interested in the guard. Right now, all of you would be in the early stages of your interest. And right now we're just selling information. We, we would love to meet with you guys, um, talk to you about the guard and, you know, just kind of see if this is for you um, or, or not. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that you guys can do with your life at this point. And the guard is here, of course, to one, take care of our state, um, take care of our country, but it's also here to make you all uh, better and more marketable um, individuals. So I'm not, I know a lot of you all are, are concerned about college or, or trade school, but some of you are gonna be lacking the work experience and there's no greater experience or, or something that a company's looking for um, than a service member, you know, they, they know that we can take direction and they know that we can get, get jobs done. So I think, I think my time's running short. I'm not sure. Do I have any more, do I have any more questions popping up? 